Welcome to my talk, where I will tell you why web is way more expensive than even a cute commercial. And also web, well, they say it's for free. And cute commercial certainly isn't for free. Uh, one or two sentences about myself. So my name is Burkhard Stubert. I'm an independent software developer. Have been de lately developing two uh, terminals for one for a forage harvester, one for a sugar beet harvester, or well, an infotainment system, or a CAN communication for an e-bike. So yes, e-bikes have CAN buses by now. So it's a little car. Um, good. So imagine you are about to start a project. You want to develop a um, core HMI of an embedded system. And say it could be, could be a home appliance, could be a printer, could be a set-top box, could be a terminal for a harvester, for a tractor, could be a medical device, whatever. So you see it varies in volume. You have millions of volumes. You have hundreds of, uh, of pieces. You have two contenders for that, obviously. You have, uh, you have web, so could be a solution using, say, Angular J, uh, JS or React Native or something like that on top of, a, on top of Blink, the Blink rendering engine from Chromium. So that's a good setup on a Linux system. And as you probably know, the web stuff comes typically under MIT or BSD license. So it looks like it's free as in it doesn't cost anything. On the other hand, you have Qt, and actually you have Qt commercial, uh, because the legal department told you, no, you are not allowed to use LGPL version 3. We don't really understand that. So that looks now, hmm, you have to pay a lot of money for, for Qt commercial. You have pay uh, per developer and per, per unit fees. And if you're thinking about, say, a million units, OK, even if it's one euro, that's quite a lot of money, at least for me it is. And so it looks, didn't look that good, uh, or it doesn't look that good at that point. Um, that was actually when, um, so the situation I just described was the situation for a big and well-known home appliance maker. Um, they approached me and said, okay, now tell us why we should use Qt. So they were pretty much settled on web. Well, they had another consultant who told them it must be web. They had pressure from their uh, mother company. Yeah, we are also using web for other stuff, so you should use that as well. So that's when they brought me in and, and asked me, tell, tell us why we should pay a lot of money for Qt when we can have web for free. Okay, so this is actually yeah, at this, uh, in the beginning, this was my hypothesis. So it was immediately clear to me, uh, the only thing that these people understand is cash, hard cash. If you're talking about te uh, technology, this Qt is technolo technologically sup superior to web or whatever. Yes, you can list loads of, of points, but that's not what upper management or what... Uh, uh, purch the purchasing department under, uh, understands. What they understand is dollars, or in that case, it's euros. And so, where, where can I find, or where can you find hidden costs in web? It's supposedly free. And then the idea was, okay, let's look and, uh, at the system on chips, the, the chipsets you need or you require to run uh, your solution, your HMI, with a really good user experience. So say an iPhone-like user experience, that's typically the requirement you get from these companies. iPhone-like user experience. So what do you need for that? And my hypothesis was, well, have been working in that industry quite a bit so far. My hypothesis was that uh, you would need something like a quad-core Cortex-A9 for 
running uh, a web HMI properly on, a, uh, on an embedded device. And well, I knew that I can, can do the same thing on a, on a Cortex A8 or even an ARM 11, think the Raspberry Pi 1. You can, you can have wonderful uh, Qt HMIs on that. It has a very good GPU. So I knew that, and I also knew that, for example, Electrolux is, uh, has a, an oven with most like an ARM 11 or a Cortex A8. So I knew that that would work. Then I looked up the prices and found out, yeah, okay, Cortex A8, think an IMX 53, for example, or OMAP 3 series, that, that's Cortex A8, so the Beagle, the original Beagle board, I think it was call, called at that time. Um, yeah, 9.80 9 euros for a volume of 1 million. So if you go to lower volumes, these prices go all up. Um, on the other side, a quad core Cortex A9, think IMX6, industrial grade, actually. Well, in a, in a home appliance, you, you can't use a consumer product. You're talking about 21 euros. So, but now, okay, that's a good uh, starting hypothesis, but now I have to prove it. So I have to prove somehow or make it very likely that my hypothesis here is right for both for both web and Qt, and that's what I uh, set off to do. Um, and actually, the, the yellow thing in the middle, that's then the, to finish that, the yellow thing is in the middle is the delta between the uh, SOC costs. So it would be something like 11 euros, and the Qt variable there, lowercase, uh, is actually the cost for cute commercial. And I know you are burning to ask me how much you have to pay, and my answer is please ask cute sales. But it's much, it's much less than the 11.35 euros. So, yeah. Good. So let's prove that and uh, make that obvious that, yeah, it's it's like that. First, maybe not everyone sleeps with, uh, with arm socks under, under their pillow like I do. So a quick recap of uh, arm SSCs. Um, so start, let's start at the bottom. So you have the arm no nines. Maybe you do. Well, you won't find them in phones anymore. Uh, I built a VoIP phone some, some years back with that. They, they are single core, they have no GPU, and well, they may run at 400 megahertz, something like that. Then moving up, the ARM 11 is, is pretty well known from the Raspberry Pi. Uh, one, the very first model, had a fantastic GPU uh, from Broadcom, and yeah, so they are ARM 11s with or without GPU but always single core, something like 600 megahertz, not too fast either. You probably know the iPhone 3, 3G, so that should give you an idea, okay, the iPhone 3G or the uh, even better known Nokia N8 uh, used an ARM 11. Okay, moving up, Cortex-A8, uh, premium home appliances in 2013 use Cortex A8, single core with GPU, that is, with OpenGL acceleration. The Nest thermostat has a Cortex A8. Wow, that's not much UI there, but still has a Cortex A8. So that's a lot of money they pay for that. iPhone 4, in-flight entertainment system, agricultural terminals, and the Nokia N9, our beloved Nokia N9. And then going up, so the Cortex A9 that's used in the iPhone 4S, okay, quad core, uh, typically also available in dual core, IVI middle class cars, and the uh, agricultural terminals shown <laughs> next month at the show. Um, okay, and then everything that is above, forget it in, uh, in home appliances, for example. High-end home appliances, for example, run on a Cortex-A8, even nowadays. 
everything 64-bit or so, far too expensive, and you're talking about razor-thin margins in, in home appliances. A bit about the prices, because that's what, what, uh, what I'm exploiting. Uh, the right column is the one that I will use with the 1 million units. And you can, uh, uh, for yourself, you can look at the other prices. And the one, uh, one difference that is really interesting to me is the Cortex-A8 versus the Cortex-A9. So you saw that already, 21 versus uh, 10 euros. That's quite a lot of money. And yeah, one core versus four core. And it's always industrial grade not consumer price. Consumer prices are, are much cheaper. Good. So the, the thesis, the assumption is that a good user experience, uh, if you want to achieve good user experience, an iPhone-like user experience with web, you need at least a quad-core ARM Cortex-A9, something like an iMix 6. Toradex can give you, I think, 10 of them right away. Um, so, the two things that are striking is there are very few high-profile uh, web applications on embedded uh, systems, and there are two highly public uh, cautionary stories about using web on smartphones, that's Facebook, or on embedded devices, that's Netflix. So, let's look, let's look at these things. Um, that's the uh, embedded web applications I found. Um, if you know more, uh, let, let me know. So I found an infotainment system on a Porsche 918 Spyder. Nice car. Um, Third-party apps on, for cars are often written in uh, HTML because uh, the argument of the uh, of the car makers is well for the uh, third party apps think uh, think of an app which tells you where the next free parking uh, spot is or so it's not that important uh, the user experience is not that important what what they care about is the user experience of the core hmi not of third party apps and that must be stellar anything else doesn't work and that's where they put in the money and what they use is native uh, UI frameworks, it's Qt or it's EBGuide from Electrobit. There's not much more left in the automotive industry. Um, Netflix is an example, or the uh, Orange Life Box, a set-top box in France. Um, so that's very few examples. Um, for me, in the end, I would say it's not really a surprise. If you look at how web frameworks advertise themselves, it's, they, they say, well, we are for mobile and desktop, or just for mobile. You will hardly find any web framework, not at, at least the popular ones, saying, well, uh, you can write HMIs on, on embedded systems. You just don't find it. I think they know their sweet spots and where, where it's not really working. Okay, so next is the Facebook story. So it was actually on a Tech Disrupt conference in 2012 when Mark Zuckerberg went on stage and said that the biggest mistake that we made as a company is betting too much on HTML5 as opposed to native. We burned two years and uh, take it millions or tens of millions of dollars. And what they noticed is that, uh, well, they used web on uh, for their Facebook app on smartphones and they noticed, well, it's just not good enough on that. The user didn't really pick up on it, and so they went native, and suddenly uh, they saw a huge increase in, in people using uh, uh, their app on Android, iOS. Unfortunately, they didn't use uh, Qt, so the, it's not that much of a happy ending, but they went native. And it's actually the, the device on which they failed was an iPhone 4S with a dual-core Cortex-A9. So that is, in, in today's standards, it's pretty, 
medium mid-range, nothing spectacular. And they weren't able to pull it off there. And they, had, they have certainly some of the best web developers in the world. So and their problems are, and that's what you will always see if you're looking at web, high memory consumption, uh, you have problems when scrolling or you have stuttering in animations, uh, sluggish touch tracking, still the same. And it's incredibly hard to find the find bugs or find out why is it using that much memory. So it's the tools uh, tools missing. If you want to see that live, these these problems web has, go to this equality booth over there, the Austrian guys, there, Dimitri, <laughs> I think, and they have it next to each other, two screens, one cute, one web and you have only one try to find out which one is cute. So. Good. Uh, the other story, that's a slightly different one. Netflix really never gave up on web. Um, and they faced a much bigger problem than, than Facebook on smartphones because Netflix has to run on on Blu-ray players, DVD players, set-top boxes, smartphones, PCs, and you have a wide spectrum of, uh, of uh, chips in there. You have pretty low-level chips, you will find some, some ARM 11 still. Uh, I don't know whether the uh, in a TV you find a 64-bit ARM chipset by now, can be maybe now in 2012 when the Cortex A9 came out. Well, they slowly started to th uh, think about that for TVs and set up boxes. And I think 2013 saw the first ones. So, yeah, it's a, it's a slow moving industry as well. But 3D uh, TV and HD TV did a lot. So every TV and set box now needs a, a GPU at least. So you, so going up, <laughs> not down. And so they started actually with a hybrid approach using Qt Web WebKit in 2009 and 2014. And Nokia, the Nokia Qt department was very much involved in there. Uh, well, if you have played around with their um, app at that time, it was just awful. Oh yeah, there is another image coming in the cover flow in 10 seconds. So that was awful. Uh, then they thought, no, that's, uh, we can't go on like that. And there was more, more competition. So uh, Apple, for example, entered. Uh, HBO and Hulu and wh whatever. And so they thought we have to do better. What they did is they wrote their own rendering engine in JavaScript. So they wrote a complete rendering engine. Threw away whatever you could get on the market. And they started with React, optimized React and optimized and optimized turned it into their, uh, in, into their own language. So they ended up with, uh, with a huge development effort and uh, paying a lot of money. And these tools are proprietary. So you have no chance to, to get, uh, get what they did. So if you want to use web, do the same. If you want to be able to use it, uh, well, on a Cortex-A8, hmm, 30 frames per second, who is happy with that these days? Not so many. The response time is, I think, still too high with 110 milliseconds. So you touch and then it takes 110 milliseconds until the uh, TV uh, responds. Now that doesn't really cut it. So not quite a good UX still. You spend, they spend a lot of dollars and with Qt, yeah, it comes right out of the box. Not much effort to do there. And that is actually, well, Qt speaks for itself. Just walk around there, look at the demos you see there, ask them what's the processor inside. And you will actually see, so if you look at automotive, seven of the top 15 OMs use Qt for their infotainment systems. 
seven of the top 15. So you, we know Mercedes, obviously. There are a couple of other big names in there. Um, Two-year electric vehicle OEMs use it. Well, we saw Tesla yesterday in the keynote. Yeah, they were one of the. They actually use Qt Classic. So Qt C++. There was no QML around when they started that. And Remark uses it. Another electric car. And there are more. So there are at least I could. Uh, I, I know of 12 or more tier one suppliers who are using it, who are using, who have a cute based platform. Harman is one of them. And there are a couple of more. In the agricultural uh, business, the tractor there, you have one, uh, one of the top three guys is using cute on, on every tractor and harvester they produce. And they produce quite a lot. Uh, the other two top threes have started uh, with Qt projects. So one went down the Android road and is now coming back slowly. The other one has done quite a bit in secrecy. Let's see whether we, uh, they come out next month on the Agritechnica show. At least two of the top three OEMs in the, uh, for in-flight entertainment systems are using Qt. Panasonic is the poster child there. And yeah, you see Electrolux is using this ominous uh, home appliance maker, Ham. It's not a food producer. Uh, E-bikes have, uh, uh, have uh, used Qt as well. And there actually was supposed to be a, uh, a showcase here with, a, with an e-bike, but it didn't, didn't turn out. So fitness uh, uh, equipment makers are using Qt and many, many more. So just go looking and just check some uh, job uh, sites like Stack Overflow or so. Who is searching for Qt developers? We are, we are lucky to work in that industry. So there's plenty of jobs for us. So I have sad news for the, for the web guys. Nothing will change anytime soon. And I actually ran through a similar exercise five years ago uh, with another uh, home appliance makers. And they had exactly the same findings as my, my current customer. Um, so nothing changed much over the last five years. And uh, nothing much will change in the next five to ten years, I would bet. And anyway, if, if web catches up, uh, Qt was already there. Hoo -hoo. Uh, the hare and the hedgehog play. I think Germans at least understand that. So uh, let's quickly look at RAM flash power startup time. The size of the Chromium browser on my Ubuntu 16.04 is 42 megabytes. Qt 5 Web Engine Core clocks in at at 103 megabytes, and it's a strip release version. It's not a debug build, so I was shocked. Um, so I didn't expect that much. Uh, cute, uh, quick QML, on the other hand, is eight megabytes. That's the two libraries you need. Startup time uh, on a Raspberry Pi 3, that's a pretty powerful sock inside. It's six seconds just for the browser. You can start up the Linux, a Linux system and a QML app in 1.25 seconds. That's operating system plus application. And that's what you need in a, uh, in a home appliance or in a TV. You don't want to wait for 10 seconds or 15 seconds until your TV switches on. Power consumption, that's now only for MacBook, but just look. So your battery time you get out of surfing uh, web pages on Safari is, f is five hours uh, and a half. And doing the same with Chrome is three, uh, three hours, 40 minutes. So it's much shorter. And it is Chromium, the Chromium engine you, you, you would be using on embedded devices most likely. You won't get Safari there. <coughs> Um, yo, four minutes? Yeah. Yeah. We, we yeah, we started three minutes late. Yo, um, okay. QML compilation is a, is a big, uh, big, 
spoon to uh, uh, to cute, obviously. There is nothing that uh, that is uh, from from the web side which can match it. No way. And that's you have. 30% faster startup time just by switching on QML uh, compilation. And even with just-in-time compilation, whenever web improves, well, Qt can improve as well, and they, they know exactly what the web guys are doing. Rendering flows, well, just the quick version on the left-hand side for, for web, it's just much more complicated and uh, then uh, for QML. The QML rendering flow is geared for an OpenGL scene graph, and that's why you can accelerate the graphics that nicely. It's a totally complicated and different story on, on the left-hand side. So, conclusion. Well, that's this picture again. So the conclusion is really, and actually my customer uh, built a prototype, one with web, one with Qt, uh, on a Cortex A9, actually, and a Cortex A8. And, well, the result was as expected. Uh, it wouldn't cut it uh, with, with web, so they decided, after a lot of time, yes, we use Qt, ordered some licenses, and I hope they are happy ever after now. And that's the difference you see. So it's really the hardware cost is a different of 11 euros plus. If you go down, so the breaking point where it would be uh, equal, uh, you are looking at something like 500 uh, uh, units. And then we are talking about technolog uh, technologically pros and cons. Fantastic. Qt will beat them easily. Okay. That's it. Thank you very much. Any question in the audience? Over there, I think. Uh, just a question of oh, sort of where the advantage comes from, not disputing the conclusion or anything. So both in both cases, you have an engine which is effectively written in C++, you know, Blink, whatever is on the other mm -hmm. side, doesn't matter. Both of them run a JavaScript engine, so if you have QML, some shape or form of JavaScript happens on, on, on both sides. So does this really come down to solely the rendering engine in the case of Qt? So scene graph and the stuff that goes on it. Um. The, the, the performance you see uh, at runtime, uh, yes, that's a lot uh, uh, due to the rendering engine because mainly the, the DOM tree is pretty complicated and actually Netflix reduced it, reduced it, reduced it, said you are only allowed to use these and these things, not that. And then they optimize the, the DOM tree and uh, the DOM tree is a bit, uh, and then you have the global CSS changes in there. So you're doing tree transversions. So that takes a lot of time. It's, it's a lot more complicated than the uh, QML mapping. Right. And, and just to follow up nutshell. on that. So do you think that React Native in some shape or form can be competitive in this regard? So that, you know, that's something that to, to maybe look at. Well, there is a possibility, but. Uh, at the moment, I just don't see it happening, and okay. it's yeah. You you, they, you would have to put a lot of uh, of time and effort in it. That's basically the message. Yes, you might be able to do it on a Cortex A9. I doubt that you you have to do put in even more work on on a Cortex A8 or lower. So it doesn't scale down well. Yeah. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Uh, coming from a little bit different perspective, because I had uh, experience with a uh, similar case like Netflix had. I mean, working for a company. Uh, the big thing right now is uh, encrypted media extensions, which is DRM for the web. So, uh, and seeing like, for example, uh, TV, smart TV apps, mm -hmm. uh, every producer has his own walled garden. Yeah. So, having web, uh, for this kind of case is actually mandatory because you can't, usually you can't run native application. So if you deliver some, uh, uh, some media for your customers and you won't be present, then you are somehow forced to be, uh, 
using web. That's one thing. Yep. Uh, and uh, another is uh, in the compilation time. Uh, I've uh, listened some podcasts from Brendan Eich, Brendan Eich that they moving towards web assembly, and uh, this this is like target. I agree that when they will be there, Qt was already uh, yeah. been present. But they're uh, talking about uh, WASM. Yes, uh, uh, this is this was the uh, previous step. Right now, uh, they are going for the web, web assembly mostly because. Uh, they have proven that it's impossible to have two runtime systems in the Chromium uh, and uh, preserve uh, security mm -hmm. because you have problems, then big problems, which you cannot solve actually. Yeah. So having only one runtime WebAssembly and JavaScript on top of it is the, their solution right now. So yeah. anyway, the, the, the main part is about the encrypted media extensions and DRM and how you could solve it in Qt. I, I've seen being it solved by uh, embedding Qt Web Engine inside normal application and having this huge burden you, just, you, just to be able to play uh, some commercial video. Okay. So you, you, uh, you, can, uh, you can actually go to free, you might know, uh, second biggest uh, telecoms provider in, in France. They have a QML solution on their set of boxes and they have solved it. There, there are others out there who have done it with Qt. So it's possible, it's certainly, uh, well, I agree in the on the website you get uh, more for free, so to say, and you have to do a bit more uh, there on the Qt side. But um, to your first point, actually, um, the problem there is also that every uh, set-top box maker, TV maker, is using their own subset of, of uh, HTML or whatever. So you can you can run an application maybe on on this device, but you can't run it on the on the other. And HBB TV, for example, is an awful example uh, f for web. So it's actually uh, a runaway example. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so there are also some efforts for that, but my message there would be with TV setter boxes. If you look at uh, the, uh, say, the Apple TV box, well, it's native apps. And that's why, why, for example, I use it. And I don't use the catch up TV offerings, web offerings on my TV because they are crap. I never get through to the end of the video or uh, I don't even find the video. So yes, uh, then I turn to some powerful setup box and they are actually native, very powerful SSC in there. So there we go again. So it, yeah, if you, if you use a powerful enough SOC, uh, you can certainly get something working with some caveats. Okay. Um, it's not a question, it's a comment. So I oh, work man. for the company that tried to do the same, but for the desktop application. So we do the desktop application for Mac OS X, uh, Linux 32 and Linux 40, 64. Um, so as a consequence, we found the framework, which is called Electron. So this is the framework when you create the application as the web page and it deploys to all the three operating systems yeah. or four. Um, as a consequence, we had a guy in a team who was working for Microsoft. I don't know if you're aware, but the um, Skype for Xbox One is written almost in JavaScript, almost only in JavaScript. Uh, I know. They failed. They failed. It took five years Good. and they failed. And we told them five years ago when they, uh, when they uh, uh, went away from Qt and said we do it uh, in the webby thing. <laughs> so we wanted to do the same. We wanted to switch to Electron, but we found out that the first problem is that the JavaScript engineers are much cheaper. This yeah. is good. But the problem is that there are cheaper on a purpose. I mean, when we <laughs> sometimes when we read the code created by people who don't care about memory, yeah. who completely have no idea how the memory works, um, we understand that there are cheaper. So at the same time, whenever you guys want to try to integrate the desktop application inside, I mean the web application inside of the desktop application, mm -hmm. uh, what we found out that when there is um, when there is the error inside of the Chromium, 
you will not be able ever to determine what's going on exactly. because you cannot you cannot attach GDB on the one side and JavaScript debugger on the other side and see what happened. And yeah. when you deploy this to the market, you're just sorry for this, but you're just fucked up. Two, two quick answers. Uh, try to find JavaScript engineers who have embedded experience. Hard. What was the other one? What was, what was your first point again? What was your first point again? Uh, I don't <laughs> me, me neither. So then that's that's okay. <laughs> ah, yeah, Electron. Um, uh, you actually point out uh, one big problem for web. You have every two, uh, every other year or every year, you have a new super duper framework uh, that uh, will solve all your problems. And there is uh, hardly any stability in in the APIs there. It's and um, that's quite the opposite to Qt. So you have probably seen Lars's talk and talking about API stability and Qt puts in a lot of effort to keep your uh, APIs stable over the years. So that's something you won't get on, on the website. Okay, I think we have to end it here. Sorry, but you can talk to me in private. Thanks a lot. Thank